I am wondering is that if there's anything that need to be said once a child is playing for through the process that God has created. I think we're going to have to go to scripture to see if we can get some insight. And what we will be talking about in the coming weeks is really sanctification. But it's going to take us a minute to get there. So let's begin with a word of prayer and we're going to see how quickly we can get there. And I want us to look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. But let's pray. Father, it is good to be before you and you give us an opportunity to launch far out, far out into the eternal world on that broad ocean where our souls triumph over all evils on the shores of mortality. And Father, nobody could have done that but you. And Father, when we launch far out, we find ourselves in third heaven. We find ourselves in the heavenly places, in the holy mountain, in the throne room, in the holies of holies. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We know we have been gifted to have that opportunity to come so close to you. So Father, we need you to speak to us Speak that we will listen and we will obey. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The thing I would love to ask you, what does it feel like to be pregnant? What does it feel like? And I'm sure everybody can't answer that question, but is there anybody that can tell me what it feels like to be pregnant? We're going to come to Luke uh, chapter 1, as I said, and we may have to back up for a minute. In fact, let's do that. Let's back up to verse 26 instead of starting at verse 30. Oh. Uh, 26 says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, greetings, favored one the Lord is with you but she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation is this the angel said to her do not be afraid Mary for you have found favor with God and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. You should call his name Jesus. Hmm. Uh, 32. Well, I want to come to that later, but let me just say this. How did Mary find favor in God? If you can answer that, 
then you can also answer, how do you find favor with God? I don't think you do. I think God graced you enough for him to show up at your address and then let it be determined that you have found favor. I think it was it's a sovereign choice made by God because he could have had favor with anybody but he chose Mary that was engaged to Joseph to have favor. You think that's something we can praise God about? I think we're to praise God that, uh, in fact, let me just talk about your salvation. He found favor and you had an encounter with him, but it's because of grace that he graced you with his presence and then it was determined that you had found favor. So here's Mary. And, the, and what the angel said to her is that you're going to conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall call him Jesus. Hmm. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and you, and for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Now, I know we never think about that, but let me just propose something here. Uh, and that's why we start off the broadcast with what does it feel like to be pregnant? Well, here's Mary, and she's about to become pregnant. Supernaturally, but she's about to come pregnant, become pregnant. And, but look how it does it. He says, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. And then that that's going to be found in you is going to be the holy child of God. Now, we'd like to ask Mary, Mary, what does it feel like to have God on the inside of you? What does it feel like? And not only that, but Mary, you're going to have God on the inside for nine months, a complete pregnancy. What does that feel like? And so now, when I ask you, what does it feel like? That was a privilege for Mary to have the Son of God in her womb for nine months. So now let me flip the script. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the power of the Most High has overshadowed you. Now you tell me, what does it feel like to have Jesus on the inside of you? Did you catch the switch? He is on the inside of you. And that was the Father's plan all the time. Even when you look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
What is that eternal life? The eternal life is Jesus Christ himself. That eternal life is going to be in you. And that's going to be the hope of glory. You think we got a good God. You think we got an awesome God. You see, it was no accident that you... I want to say fell into, bumped into, came into the gospel. No. It was planned before the foundation of the world. You were called, you were chosen, you were elected. At a certain time, in time, you were going to have an encounter with God. And that encounter is going to leave you with Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. So tell me, please, what does it feel like to be pregnant, to be carrying Jesus in your soul? What does it feel like? This God is just simply amazing. His plan is unbeatable. And and if you go to any other deity, any other God, any other, uh, quote, religion, you've never heard of Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, Dagon, Ekron, being on the inside of anybody. But they were called gods. But here is this God. You can't imitate him or duplicate him. He's God all by himself. And when he does something, it can't be repeated. You might as well break the mold. You can drop the mic now. Because this God, and I think, and I know I know, that's why I am so in love with him. Because he first loved me. And for him to do that for me. And, and look, I had nothing to contribute. You had nothing to contribute. When Jesus talked to Nicodemus, he didn't have nothing to contribute. But he did tell him, Nicky, you got to be born again. And Nicky, if the Son of God don't live on the inside of you, you can't even see the kingdom. Let's no one talk about trying to understand the kingdom. Wow. Let me try to put some ends on this thing. When you expressed your willingness to call Jesus Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, something supernatural happened to you. Let me tell you what happened to you. The Holy Spirit was given to you as a gift. A gift from the Father. And when the Holy Spirit came on the inside, he baptized you in Christ. He indwelt you in Christ. He regenerated you in Christ. He dwells in you in Christ. But then he feels you in Christ. So now you got Christ on the inside. For how long? It's a little bit longer than nine months. It's eternity. For all of eternity. And I think we ought to give God praise because nobody could do you like this but God. So, let's thank him now. Let's praise him now. Let's love him now. Father, here we are again. And we dearly love you. But it's because of your love that the Holy Spirit has poured out in us 
to have the capacity to love you and then to love our neighbor as ourself. Father, you never meant for us to keep those two commandments by ourselves, but you were going to help us keep those commandments. Loving God with all your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. And on these two, hinge all the laws and all the prophets. So beloved, so Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you because nobody has done this for us but you. So now, Father, you have your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.